Yeah. Okay. I'll just sing a little Tony Bennett then. No. <laughs> All right. We now call this meeting to order. Um, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. All right. Now is roll call. Chair Kevin Rooney. Here. Vice Chair Mario Montiel, Jr. Here. Commissioner Edwin Borkas. He is not present. Commissioner Edith Flores. Present. And Commissioner Christopher Sines. Present. Chair, I need a motion to excuse um, Commissioner Borkas. I'll motion to excuse. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 He is excused. All right, now we have um, public communications. Anyone wishing to say anything? You have three minutes. All right, seeing none, we now close public communications. Okay, we go to the consent calendar. I believe that is under Amy's thing. These are just the um, action minutes from the February 28th, 2018 Planning Commission meeting. Okay. Um, for your review and approval. Uh, motion to approve. Uh, I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. Okay. And now we have um, a request for consideration. Hi, everyone. Hello. I'm Elizabeth Florence, planning technician. Um, so. Okay, um, so the request before you is a request for consideration of a conditional use permit for an automobile repair business with automobile sales and rentals within the IC industrial commercial zone pursuant to table 153.050.020 in the city's municipal code. The location is at 13409 Garvey Ave, Unit 5. Applicant is 412 Motorsport LLC. And the case number is 859. So the applicant 412 Motorsport LLC is proposing to establish an automobile repair business with sales and rentals. The property is located at 13409 Garvey Ave, Unit 5, on the north side of Garvey Avenue and west of the intersection of Garvey Ave and Baldwin Park Boulevard. The site is rectangular in shape and contains approximately 54,865 square feet, 1.26 acres of lot area, and is improved with one building with seven units of approximately 24,063 square feet. Unit five is 2,706 square feet. Um, the site accommodates 49 stalls for parking, including three handicap stalls with eight loading spaces. And unit five is allowed four stalls and the ability to um, park cars being worked on within their unit. So the proposed use is compatible with surrounding operations to the north and south, east and west. However, there are properties to the west that are single family residential, um, but they're buffered by the building itself. Um, the auto repair sales and rentals are in unit five. 
with the rear of the building closest to the residence. Therefore, planning staff has added conditions of approval to ensure that activities will not have an adverse impact on those properties. So condition E restricts the business to specific hours of operation that are in compliance with the municipal code section referencing those hours of operations. The business will operate Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Saturday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Condition J states that the applicant is prohibited from causing or allowing the deposit or disposal of any hazardous substances at the property. And condition B requires that the applicant to conduct all vehicle repairs within the enclosed building at all times. And so staff has reviewed the application and operational characteristics and has determined that with the added conditions of approval, the proposed business will not have an adverse impact to the adjacent properties. Therefore, staff recommends that the Planning Commission adopt resolution PC 1807 entitled, a resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of Baldwin Park adopting the findings of fact in approving a conditional use permit to allow an automobile repair business with automobile sales and rentals within the IC industrial commercial zone pursuant to table 153.050.020 in the city's municipal code with the location 13409 Garvey Avenue, Unit 5, the applicant 412 Motorsport, LLC, and case number CP859. This concludes staff presentation. Okay, any questions from the commissioners? No? Uh, just do you clarify again, uh, you said J, the condition J was what again? Condition J states that the applicant is prohibited from causing or allowing the deposit or disposal of any hazardous substances at the property. So like if they do an oil change or something yeah. of that nature, they just can't dispose of it on the property itself. Right, they would have to move it out. Yeah, all, all of them are like that. They don't yeah. allow you, you put them in barrels yeah. and ship them out. Yeah, there's certain requirements for disposal of hazardous materials like antifreeze, oil, things like that. They just can't be thrown in the waste management bin. No, 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 no. Uh, yeah. What I was thinking is so mm -hmm. you can have actual environmental services come to you and pump them yeah. out of yeah. your. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. So something like I that. I just thought anyway. it was totally prohibited. I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. Okay, thank you for clarifying. Uh -huh. and I have a question. There, are they going to have like anything like car painting going on over there or anything like that? None. No oh. car painting, just strictly like the general repair that wouldn't include that um, body repairs, things like that. Okay. Um, any more questions? All right. And um, I believe that we open it up to anybody yes. wishing to speak. State your name, and you have three minutes. Seeing there's no interest, I will now close public communications. And I have a question. Is there a motion to pass? I have a question first. Okay. Um, maybe it applies to anything in general. Do we ever get phone calls or like emails about any of? I imagine you would tell us, right? If Nobody showed. You know, <clears throat> typically we do not have a lot of people come out to planning commission meetings for items um, unless it's something that's significant um, and something that is going to, you know, that raises people's, you know, attention. Um, in this case, um, Associate Planner Teas was just telling me that the applicant actually, his brother was in a really, really bad car accident and is in the hospital. So that might be why he's not here tonight. Um, but yeah, you know, if, if we have, um, typically I will warn you or let you know as part of the presentation if we get a lot of written comments or a lot of phone calls, but typically we don't. I have a question, Amy. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> when we uh, approve, let's say, uh, one of the permits for a particular company, mm -hmm. um, what are the, uh, I guess, what are the regulations behind it when another company comes in, let's say, two, three months later mm -hmm. with a totally different name? Do the rules still apply to them or? Yes. Because they don't come through us. Right. Conditional use permits stay with the property. 
So today we have um, what, sport 412 Motorsports, for example. Yeah. Let's say um, they want to sell their license to 900 Motorsports. 900 Motorsports can move in, get a business license, and provided they operate in accordance with these conditions of approval, they're good. Okay. The, the, the original applicant, 412 Motorsports, can't take their CUP to another property and plop it down. Okay. The CUP stays specifically to the property, which is why you see the address and APN numbers throughout the, the, governing, the governing resolution. Okay. The, the only reason why I ask is because one particular company that we approved a, a while back mm -hmm. called Victory mm -hmm. uh, on Arrow Highway mm -hmm. um, happened to have changed, I guess, ownerships. And mm -hmm. It yes, looks different. Yeah. Yes, they did. Um, however, the underlying use is still the same okay. um, as, as automobile sales and accessory repair and maintenance. Yeah. Provided that they operate that business in accordance of the, with the conditions of approval that you as the planning commission adopted as part of the approving resolution, they're good. They're good. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Amy, is this the third auto repair around there in that area? I know of two. I, I know of at least one other one. George Lopez has uh, auto repair towards the end where Wendy's is at, and then all the way around to the end, there's By another the one freeway, called BP, right? BP Auto yeah. Repair. There's only two that I know of. The one in the corner, I think they, I don't know if they're really operational or not, but it looks like auto sales and, and auto mechanic, but, but I never see it active. Well, to, uh, my impression that this is more of a, like a mechanic for motorsport vehicles likely not going to be like a typical right mechanic. You know? not like a typical car, car dealership yeah. or mechanics yeah. so. and then rentals more than likely. Uh, my discussions with the applicant were that the vehicles that they're going to be working on and selling or renting out are um, <laughs> um, a, a, i guess a better make like bmw or whatever that you know higher end higher end oh. is what they're saying I've seen ATVs and, and as the neighbors in the front, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Any more questions? All right. Is there a motion to pass? I'll motion to approve. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It passes. You see 18-07. 18-07? Yes. Yeah, I'm looking for it. All right. <laughs> now, um, I believe next we have an update from Amy. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, yeah, the next item on the agenda is um, our reports of officers. As you know, um, we bring you the planning division, the division's monthly report. Um, what's before you is the monthly report for February. We've been pretty busy. So if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them. <laughs> Um, was it still stalemate with um, Erendale? I wouldn't call it a stalemate. You know, when things go through the legal process, it, it takes a really long time. Um, various requests go back and forth between the parties with, you know, a lot of times, minimum times that they need to meet whatever request you're asking for or time to consider it. Um, it's still out there. I know they're going back and forth, um, but we're not privy to the, the fine details of it. Okay, now I have a curious question. Mm -hmm. As the city of Ballon Park, are we allowed to send flyers out to the residents of Erendale, letting them know that they're trying to put a toxic waste dump over there? Because I talk to people from Erendale all the time, and all of them seem oblivious to what's going on. None of them know anything. Mm -hmm. Can the city send it out, or you, or uh, residents? The, the, the city can the city send out flyers just to let you know your your city council is trying to put a toxic waste dump near your neighborhood. You know, that would be something that would direction would have to be given from the council to the city manager and trickle down. Right. And, um, and typically, um, when you go outside of your jurisdiction, uh, it's, it's said to be a gift to public funds. Mm -hmm. So um, 
communication within the city is appropriate, but outside of your city boundaries is, is just not done. Okay. You, as an individual, could, of course, do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I have a, I have a question. Um, <coughs> um, so, like, in uh, 20, 2016, um, the uh, state Senate uh, passed um, Senate Bill uh, 1069 and 2017 SB 229, and they were um, signed by um, uh, Governor Brown. And so, anyway, it made um, accessory dwelling units um, – the ability to build accessory uh, dwelling units um, easier, I guess. But has our city, I know because it's in the news, um, Pasadena is such a progressive city that um, made it a little easier. Has, has our city at all kind of looked into it? We've actually looked into it. We have actually, and we know it's something we need to bring our code up to comply with. But, you know, as you well know, it's just <laughs> Abraham and I, pretty much full time. Um, we've actually hired a consultant to look into bringing our um, second dwelling unit ordinance consistent with state law. So we are moving towards that, and you as the commission will probably be seeing that, what, June? Yeah, yeah May, June is what we're hoping on. Um, so we are moving forward. Just, you know, we're, uh, it just takes some time. Well, well I, no, I, I didn't. I didn't mean to put any pressure. I, I just happened to see it on the news, so I and I'm new on the commission, so I didn't know if something had. Yeah, um, one of the things that we're really going to be scrutinizing that we know is going to be a very big challenge for this city is the parking. Um, as you well know, a lot of people do not park in their garages; they park in the street or in their driveway, and if you can now convert those garages into living quarters without having to replace it, where are those cars going to go? That uh, brings me to my next question. <laughs> um, uh, so I know that a lot of um, cities are now like, um, you know, for overnight parking on the street or are requiring parking permits. Is that the, something that I don't know, maybe the city has ever thought about, um, maybe um, even in like downtown? You know, um, in all my years here, um, I believe it's been brought up once or twice. However, um, it was never adopted for a variety of reasons. Number one was enforcement. You would need people to be out there, you know, at two, three o'clock in the morning issuing permits or whenever, you know, the time frame was. Um, enforcement was one. But also, too, um, you know, it was also a cost factor. And I remember one council at the time didn't want to do it because of a cost factor to our residents. So, fair enough. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, just one more question. Of course. With our city pushing 90 plus um, thousand residents, um, would it shouldn't it be more feasible to get you some help <laughs> with your job? Like, have more people working with you or under you? I would not turn away more full-time help or anything. But, you know, I also know that, you know, we do have, you know, we're primarily funded through general fund, you know, which is the same funding that funds the police department um, and parks and recreation. So um, I've asked. So I what, ask do, we, what do we need to do to... Get you more help. Uh, after the meeting, we can. I'm sorry. <laughs> after the meeting, uh. um, you know, ultimately, it, it comes down to you know the budget and how the council wants to allocate things. Um, you know, it, that's really what it boils down to, um, is how they want to allocate it. You know, we're fine. We make we make do with you know with what we have. You know, things obviously don't get done as fast as sometimes as we'd like to, but. You know, yeah, we like to say we like right? to say that we're too good, <laughs> <laughs> and that's when you have more piled on you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just that good, and they oh, they're great. Let's just keep giving them more. Yeah. So, but I appreciate you know your your thoughts with that. So, you know, yeah, it's just I I see you work outside of 
here mm -hmm. so i know how much you guys work yeah, <laughs> yeah. and we're in a, and we're and i'm really lucky i'm gonna say and i'm gonna give my plug to the three of them over there um jonathan elizabeth and esther you know even though they're part-time you know we're really lucky with who we have and the staff that we have and you know esther keeps us in line <laughs> i have right. one more yes ma'am um, Going back to uh, Francis uh, LA Fitness, yeah. and I noticed that there's a keep keep clear sign on the on the on the street, yes. exiting through Coffee Bean and all that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is there is that is that um, something they can do exiting through LA Fitness as well? Um, you know, all of that is handled through our Public Works Department. I do believe Public Works is going to be looking into doing, looking at traf potential traffic control measures down there, be it at where that driveway comes out right at Korak, be it at the intersection where Vineland runs into the freeway. Um, they are going to be looking at that, that area and traffic control measures. Oh, nice. So, uh, trust me, we were there today. We we know. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? All right. I believe is is that everything? Uh yeah, we talked about um the Irwin Dale Materials Recovery Facility, yeah. All right. Um do I have a motion for adjournment? Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Great.